Hi, in this video, we're going to solve the world's hardest easy geometry problems. These problems have generated a lot of interest among high school students and readers who enjoy mathematical challenges. Uh, triangle number one is the original problem. Triangle number two um, is a variation problem. These two problems are very popular over the internet. In this series of videos, in addition to solving problem number one and problem number two, we will also solve problem number three using elementary geometry skills and concepts. In triangle number one, in triangle problem number one, the angles formed by the segments inside the triangle with the base of the triangles are 50 degrees and 60 degrees. In triangle problem number two, the two angles are 60 degrees and 70 degrees. In problem number three, the two angles are 50 degrees and 70 degrees. But the main result of this series of video is we will come up with a general formula for an arbitrary isosceles triangle with arbitrary angles between the segments and the base of the triangle. So I would say angle omega, theta, and alpha, they are all arbitrary angles. And we need to determine the value of this unknown angle beta. And that is the formula that we're going to divide in the last video. And we will call this formula the hardest easy geometry formula. And now let's begin problem number one. All right, um, this is triangle problem number one. Well, this is 20 degrees and 60 degrees, and that will make angle A 80 degrees. And then it's 30 degrees and 50 degrees, and that will make angle E 80 degrees. That means that angle C is 20 degrees. The reason is quite simple because the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. 80, 80, and 20 degrees. Well, the next thing is we would like to look at triangle A, B, and E. It is 50 degrees and it is 80 degrees, and that will make this angle 50 degrees. Again, the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, 50, 50, and 80. That means that triangle ABE is isosceles with AB congruent to AE. Let me call AE small b, and that will make AB small b as well. The next thing is I would like to locate a point G on AD such that GA will be congruent to GE. And that's not difficult to do. I'm going to use a compass and measure the segment AE and locate the point G. This is the point G. And I'm going to connect E to G to produce a segment inside the triangle. And I'm going to call this point F. And the next thing is I'm going to connect F to D. Well, based on the construction, GA will be congruent to AE. That means that is an isosceles triangle. And that means angle, this angle plus this angle will give us 120 degrees but these two angles are being identical so they must be 60 degrees each so 60 60 and this angle is also 60 degrees it is 60 degrees that means it is 10 degrees and it is 20 degrees well in other words that means this triangle at the bottom here is an equilateral triangle if this is B, this one will be small b as well, and G will be small b as well. Well, 
And now I would like to focus on two triangles here. The triangles FGA on the left and the triangle DGE on the right. Well, that is small b, and that is 20 degrees. And this angle here, I would say is 120 degrees. 60 plus 120 degrees will give me a strict angle here, which is 180 degrees. And now I'm going to look at the triangle on the right. Well, that is 20 degrees. I just copy over here, that is 20 degrees. And then the small b. Well, these two angles are vertical angles. So, well, actually, that is also 120 degrees. And these two triangles are obviously congruent because we have angle side angle and these two triangles are congruent. If they are congruent, I would say that FG will be congruent to GD. And that is 60 degree angle. That means this angle will be also 60 degrees. And now I'm going to connect F to D. Well, since this is an isosceles triangle and this angle is 60 degrees, that means the sum of these two angles is 120 degrees. And these two angles are also congruent. In other words, this, two, this angle must be 60 and it is also 60. So I have another equilateral triangle on the top. That is an equilateral triangle. And let me call FD small d. And FG will be small d as well. And GD will be small d as well. So we have two equilateral triangles here. One at the bottom and one on the top. Well, the next thing is I'm going to construct a point. I'm going to construct a point H on this side of the triangle such that HA will be congruent to HD. And then it's not difficult to do. I'm going to measure the segment AD using a compass. And I'm going to construct the point H. on AF. And now let me call this point H. And I'm going to connect H to D. Well, the next thing is I would like to focus on two triangles here, which I pull on the side. I would like to look at this triangle CFD. CFD, I put it over here. And triangle ADH. I put it over here and I would like to show that these two triangles are actually congruent. Well look at the triangle on the top here. This is 20 degrees which I copy over here. And now remember this is an equilateral triangle. This is 60 degrees and that is also 60 degrees. That means the alternate interior angles are congruent. That means FD must be parallel to AE. These two segments are parallel. If they are parallel, that means these two angles, they are corresponding angles formed by parallel lines, must be congruent. That is 80 degrees, and that will make this angle 80 degrees. So that is 80 degrees. For the same reason, it is 80 degrees. So that is an isosceles triangle. Well, before we look at triangle ADH, I would like to look at this big triangle here, from A to C to D. This is 20 degrees, this is 20 degrees. The base angles are the same. That means this is an isosceles triangle. AD will be congruent to DC. But what is AD? From A to D is basically B plus D. But AD congruent to DC, so CD is B plus D as well. So I have B plus D here, and this is our sources, this is B plus D. And we finish the triangle on the top, 
And now let's focus on this triangle here. Well, I know that is 20 degrees. I just copy over here. It is in 20 degree angle. And based on the construction, based on the construction, AD and AH are the same. AD and AH are congruent. So this is an isosceles triangle. That means these two angles are congruent. And the sum of these two angles is 160 degrees. Then that means that each one of them is 80 degrees. But I also know that from A to D is B plus D. It is B plus D. And it is also B plus D. So these two triangles are congruent. Well, it's quite simple. It's psi, angle, psi, psi, angle, psi. They are congruent angles. I mean congruent triangles. And now we know that from F to D, I call that small d, which is across the 28 degree angle here. So I cross 20 degree angle from this triangle, which is HD, and this one has to be D as well. They are the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. They must be congruent. So HD from H to D is small d. Well, we are really getting really close to solving the problem. Remember, the main goal is to find this angle beta. That is what we want. Well, I'm going to pull out. Um, I'm going to pull out triangle HBD, HBD, which I put it over here. And the bigger triangle HDA, I'm going to put it over here. And that is the angle beta, which is the unknown one we're looking for. I pull that out so we can see things a little bit better. Well. Take a look at this. From A to D has to be the same as A to H because this is isosceles. This is B plus D. But we know that AB is small b. That means from B to H has to be small d, which I put it over here. But we know that from H to D is also d. That means this is an isosceles triangle. But we know that this is 80 degree angle, 20, 80, and 80. Well, but if this is isosceles, that means these two angles are the same. So the sum of these two is 100 degrees. But they're the same, so we can divide 100 degrees by 2, so this is 50 degrees. And this is also 50 degrees. But we know that this is 80 degrees. And this is also 80 degrees. So 50 degrees plus the angle beta will give me 80 degrees. That means beta equals to 30 degrees. And that will conclude the solution for triangle problem number one. In the second video, we're going to solve triangle problem number two, which is a variation to the original problem. With 60 degrees and 70 degrees um, formed by the segments inside the triangle with the base of the triangle. Thank you.